Hello my friends, today I will show you the 7 best beginner tips for Affinity Publisher. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that and let's get started. I will go over here and search for doc and here we have our happy doc. I will just click and drag to edit to the background of my page and happy doc running wild. Well, how can we have text flow around the outside of the doc? That sounds pretty complicated, but actually it is super easy. What you have to do is you use your pen tool and then you simply click and click, click, click around the shape of the doc. So you make basically an outline where the text should go and click over to the other side and then click on your starting point to close the shape like that. So now we have a shape and now you can right click onto that shape, right click and you can here choose convert to text frame. And now it's a text frame, it's easy as that. So right click again and say insert filler text and boom, there we go. You have your text, let's make the text white and you can see flows around the dock very beautifully, very nice. One thing you need to look out for is, of course, now because of the line, we have a black line here and that doesn't look good. You need to fix that. So how do you fix that? And this is, by the way, the next tip for beginners. Click again on the text box and then on the right here, you have text frame. So click on this little icon text frame and here you have a lot of settings. One is the fill color, one is stroke color. So because we had a black line here, you want to fix the stroke color. In this case, we want to click and then click on this white circle with the red line, which means there is no fill color for or no stroke color in this case. So as you can see, now it's gone and the text is fill, uh, flowing beautifully around our dock. Next trick I want to show you is the fill color. And you can click here. We are still in the text frame settings. You can select any color you want here. So you can see uh, as a background color, that is pretty cool. And of course, you can select then when you have this open with the color down here, it says opacity. So click on that and reduce the opacity and you can see that the background will be more translucent you so you can actually see what's going on behind it. Of course, in this case, it doesn't look good. You mostly want to use it on nice text boxes actually. Over here you have, uh, sorry, down here you have a picture frame rectangle tool and below that you have a picture frame ellipse tool and you can select this and then click and drag and this will create a frame for a picture. So now when I click and drag my dog again, it will be filled inside of that picture frame like that. And as you can see, Affinity Publisher tries to fill it in the best way possible, zoom it in there. Now, the cool thing here is when you resize the shape of your picture frame, Affinity Photo will continually try to fill in the picture so it fits the best way possible. Of course, you can adjust this on your own. For example, you have here in the middle these three arrows, so you can click on that and drag the picture. For example, if you want to have the dock more in the center of the picture or more outside of the picture, you can do that. Then you have up here one for rotation like that. You can do that too. And down here you have one for zooming. So you can zoom into, so again, the dock picture actually fills the frame. So you can do all of that. That's all pretty cool. But what do you do if you want to have the frame fit the ratio of the original picture. There is also a solution for that. And that is you right click on the frame and then you go to frame properties and select size frame to content. So click on that and you will see that now the frame has the exact same ratio as the picture had. 
on the left side you can decide between frame text tool and your artistic text tool artistic text tool is just free text the frame text tool will set up a frame and you can put text inside of the frame but you can also do a lot of cool things with that frame first of all the cool thing you can do is right click and select insert filler text and this is just a kind of demo text that means nothing uh, but will allow you to design your pages without um, having to fill it with actual text i will make the text a little bit bigger so you can see what i'm doing here and um, i have to select my move tool so the actual box is selected and then i can change my text size one of the most important things you want to know about is hyphenation you might wonder what is hyphenation you can see here at the moment we don't have hyphenation so every time a word is too long for the line it just begins in the next line and this makes this kind of cheggy ends here this can look cool but uh, might maybe you want to have a more straight end on the right side so you can go over here on the right side to a tab and that tab says par and these are the paragraph settings for your text um, scroll down a little bit and here it says hyphenation and you can click on use auto hyphenation as is soon I make a check on this box here you can see that now I have these little lines and my words are broken up and start at the next line with the second part of the word so this is auto hyphenation and it makes a lot of difference in the design of your text so keep that in mind another thing that is important for text is how you can have text flow around objects i will make a shape like an ellipse here which we'll is draw it here and the important thing to remember now is that if you set up a text that should flow around the object you have to set the flow not for the text but for the object that can be confusing for beginners so with that selected with your object selected up here you see these three symbols on the left one it says show text warp settings so click on this symbol and it opens a little window and it gives you different choices on how the text should warp around the object so for example you have jump and that simply means that the text makes a jump so there's no text next to it it's not really warping it's jumping over the object doesn't look that good i wouldn't choose that the next one is square and this makes a square but you can see here that we have a round shape so we have some free areas here that could be filled with text so we have tight and this flows like that now if you think that the text is too tight you have down here the uh, the possibility to set up distance from text and you can set this for left top right and bottom how much distance you want between the text and the shape okay and of course there's a warp to both sides or largest side so check out these settings play around with them when you create a new document up here file new it opens this window and you make your settings and then it says margins and bleed and you might not know what that is so the margin is the distance from the edge of the page inside to the paper and this is important for two reasons first of all mostly text you don't want to have that too close to the edge of the page because it looks very crowded and stuffy and it just doesn't look good so there's a little bit of a safety distance but the more important part here is that when you have a printer at home the printer can't print often completely to the edges of the paper so this is where you have a safety distance so your creation your design is not cut off and this is why you have this button here that says retrieve margin from printer this is where the printer can't print on the paper the bleed on the other hand is when you send the file out to a professional printing company and they have to cut the paper somewhere because it is printed with a lot of other prints on the same bigger sheet and they have a safety area on your paper that is bigger than the product that you will receive and this is where they cut so you ask them what is the bleed you want me to set up in my document up here in document settings when you click in the third line it says image placement policy 
Sounds a little bit like legal stuff, but it really is not. You want to decide if you prefer your images or your media in the document linked or embedded. The difference is if you have a document, for example, with a lot of pages and when you print, they have to be higher resolution. The document can be really huge, like multiple gigabytes. So in that case, you probably want to link the media. So they are just displayed in Affinity Publisher at the right position, but actually they are not sitting inside of the document, but rather in a folder on your desktop. But in that case, you have to make sure that all the media you require for this document is in the same folder and not spread over all of your hard drive because you have to send these documents, these files with the publisher file if you want someone else to work on it. Okay. These have been all the tricks for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Give me a thumbs up if you like them and suggest other things you want to see and know about Affinity Publisher in the comments. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye.